stories i hope not so this poem will be very interesting for you because it is about a level of a ghost story we are going to analyze the poem two's company by raymond wilson raymond wilson is a well known american author of many publications articles and in many learned journals he was a professor of history in his university of kansas and won many awards and honors for his writing and university teaching in this poem he entertains the reader with his storytelling tone of voice about a ghost story this poem is full of imagery that mean this make the poem is more appealing to our senses and the narration is so dramatic and the story is so humorous so these things make the poem read worthwhile we have done a video presentation on this you can watch this if you want or you can visit our website www.itspring.com and read the same article if not you can click on the links given in the description okay let's see read the first stanza they said the house was haunted but he laughed at them and say ta ta i never heard such a twiddle tattle as ghosts that groan and change that rattle and just to prove i'm in the right please leave me here to spend the night so what is the notable technique you see we see the auditory image onomatopoeia okay let's first look at the poetic devices in the poem so in the poem we see the poem starts with the narrator accepting a challenge to stay in a ghostly house so he boasts that there is nothing called ghost so to prove that he is going to stay in that house for a night so as you know there are some young people and there are there are some people in the society who are either disbelieve in ghost stories or they are trying to show that they do not fear of ghosts so maybe sometimes people challenge each other to prove themselves that they are brave people and in a group naturally we can find this kind of behavior in, a, in the youth i think you have seen this kind of activities in movies also okay let's read the next part of the poem they wink absurdly try to smother their ignorant laughter nudge each other and left him just as dusk was falling with a hunchback moon and screech out scolding so the stage is set for this brave person we see as we see others are going to enjoy this maybe there is something hidden inside of their minds let's see what will happen i'm sorry i missed three lines of the stanza so uh, so i'm going to read them in fact he was quite glad of it knowing it's every sane man's mission to contradict all superstition so what do you think we see a radical person here i think you have noticed the imagery called hunchback moon and the personified owl screech owl calling so what do you think what is implied by this imagery and personification so it creates an eerie background it create a gothic environment so we see a ghostly environment reader can see that reader can feel that through this imagery and personification so as we discuss we can see how the poet illustrate the scene bringing visual imagery to the scene so the environment foreshadows imminent horror that he is going to face thus the reader gets ready to experience something sad or fearsome as we see the behavior of others shows that they know something that the challenger doesn't know and we see they are quite happy that the challenger narrator is going to learn a new lesson on the other hand we can see the challenger or the narrator is too happy because he has a sacred mission to fight against these superstitions you can see the poet's narrative style which is suitable for a storytelling so he creates suspense here he uses the techniques like foreshadowing and visual imagery and personification and everything to illustrate to set the scene for the climax so now we shall read the third stanza we see something interesting here now we see the actual nature of the narrator though he challenges 
he seems to be not the hero we expected. So let's see what's happening. But what is that? Outside it seemed as if chains rattled. Someone screamed. Come, come, it's merely nervous. He's certain, but just the same he draws the curtain. The stroke of twelve, but there's no clock. He shuts the door and turns the lock. Of course, he knows that no one's there, but no harm is done by taking care. You can see the interesting auditory imagery also here. So let's look at the poetic devices first. So we can see a common feature of storytelling in this stanza, which is the writer or the poet is asking a question in the middle of the poem, like what's that? So this is called the writer's intervention, so he has the license to intervene the poem. So this intervention of the poet involves the reader creating suspense and he asks questions from the reader to accompany them to the scene. So this is quite dramatic, right? but it introduces the behavior of the hero in brackets, just like we see this in a drama script. So we can see this evokes humor. As we discussed earlier, this poem is humorous. So we can see the humor through his behavior. So we can see his behavior is quite contradictory, what we saw in the earlier part, right? He was boasting in the first part of the poem. So, his behavior exactly shows a frightened state of his mind. It shows the reality of most people in the society. Everybody knows that there is no ghost in the society, but they have something inside their mind. Because since their childhood, this concept of ghost is germinating in their minds. Because of that, they all fear the ghost in the cell, the ghost in the cave. So let's read the next part of the poem. So this is the final stanza. We see the climax in the poem here and it is very interesting and not the end we were expecting. Let's read the poem. Someone's outside the silly joker. He may as well as pick the poker. That noise again. He checks the doors, shutters the windows, make a pause to seek the safest place to hide. The cover is strong. He creeps inside, not that there's anything to fear, he tells himself. When at his ear, a voice breathes softly, how do you do? I'm the ghost, pray who are you? See, we see an interesting ending. As you already learned in this final stanza too, we can see the intention of the poet. He makes suggestions for the speaker in the poem. And the personification like a voice breathes, deepen the creepy effect in the poem. So it is quite interesting as uh, although the challenger knows that there is nothing to fear, he arms himself with a poker. You know what poker is? It is an iron rod to stir the ember in a fireplace. So he starts hiding under a cupboard. And the end is also quite ironic because in the first stanza we see, we expect something sad at the ending. But we find at the end of the poem, we find humor. And the actions and the behavior and utterances evoke humor further. And we feel like watching a humorous movie. And most interestingly, the introduction of the ghost is also something interesting. He's like, he speaks like a gentleman. So, which evokes humor as well as it is quite contradictory to a ghost we know. So, hope you enjoyed the poem. Before summing up, let's look at the poetic devices and the major element in the poem and after that we can continue and end our discussion. So if I ask what does the poem tells about the nature of people? Although most people do not believe in ghosts, everybody has a dark corner in their heart, in their mind about the 
goals because they have been nurturing the concept of ghost has been germinating in their mind since their childhood so that's how we are brought up telling ghost stories watching ghost movies and and listening to the ghost ideologies in religion and everything so when we are tested when we are put on a litmus test we are afraid of ghost so that is the nature of human beings as i see at certain times we encounter this feeling so the concept of ghost come out of our mind like a rubber ball hidden under the water so through the poem poet tries to bring out this dual realities in our lives in our in most of us so what do you think have you got any experience of ghost have you got any such experiences have you faced the ghost like this why don't you leave a comment below and let others to read about that so that the end of our discussion about the poem it was company by raymond wilson so if you have any suggestions or comments please leave a comment if you find this video is useful to others please share it among others if you are new please do not forget to subscribe to receive the notifications when we release a new video so bye bye until next video Thank <music> you.